Hello everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. So thank you so much for joining us for today's Discover Viterbi Industrial and Systems Engineering webinar. We have uh, several of our program faculty members here today. We have Professor Maja Dusuki, we have Professor Giza Botlik, as well as Professor uh, Cesar Acosta. Uh, my name is Erin Tanaka, and I'm representing the Viterbi Graduate Admission um, and Student Engagement um, here within the USC Viterbi School. And I'm also joined by my colleague today, Megan Balding, who will be available to answer any questions that might come up. Um, she'll be answering the more specific questions, but if you have any questions that relate to the webinar and um, it's you know, applicable to other people, then we will be able to answer those aloud um, either during the session or after the session um, where there will be an opportunity to ask additional questions. So I did want to quickly mention before we get started, so I realize that, you know, those of you that are listening right now, um, that's great. This is all content relevant to right at this moment. Uh, but for those of you that are listening um, via webinar recording later on, I do want to note that this con the content of this presentation is as of November 12th. So keep that in mind um, in case, you know, you are watching this much later um, in terms of the content and that may have been updated. So anyway, we're, we're going to go ahead and get started. One second. One moment. Okay, so one quick note before we get started, another quick note. So you will receive a PDF copy of today's presentation. I will be sending out a follow-up email with some also helpful links. So, um, you know, during the session, there are some links in the presentation, so no need to jot those down unless you need them right away. In addition, as I mentioned, you know, feel free to ask any questions. Please use the Q&A panel to the right of the presentation, and we will be sure to answer those questions either at the time or at the end of the session. So for today's program, I'll start out by first talking about University of Southern California, USC, and then specifically the Viterbi School of Engineering. And then we'll jump into the focus of, of today's presentation, which is going to be our graduate programs in industrial and systems engineering um, that our faculty members will talk about, and they'll be able to provide overviews of the program. And then I will jump back in and talk about the application criteria and the basics of how to apply. And then I also will talk about our online denovatory delivery method for those of you that are interested in pursuing your program online or maybe undecided. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, you will have the opportunity to ask, to ask any additional questions at the end of the session that were not previously answered. So in case some of you have not been to USC's campus here out in beautiful Southern California, just some snapshots of our, our campus and a little bit about USC. So we are, all, we are the, pri the oldest private university in the Western United States. We were founded way back in 1880. And currently we have over 47,000 students. Our graduate students actually outnumber the undergraduate population at over 27,000 students. We have over 4,400 full-time faculty members, um, not including many of the guest lecturers as, as well as adjunct um, that come over and from a variety of different industries and in, in lecture within our classrooms. Uh, we have a very diverse student population, so we have students from all 50 states and well over 100 different countries worldwide. And we are located in Los Angeles, so if you're not familiar with the Los Angeles area or even California, we are in Southern California, and we are located really right in the middle of all the action. So we're about a 10 to 15 minute drive, depending on traffic, uh, from the downtown Los Angeles area. And we're also about you know 45 minutes drive or so from the Silicon Beach area. So we are in a fantastic position in terms of anything from, of course, jobs and internships to um, entertainment, arts, and you, you name it, uh, we have it all here uh, right in our backyard. So specifically about the Viterbi School, 
So we are comprised of eight academic departments. So each of our master's degrees and graduate certificates, as well as our PhD programs, are administered or housed within one of these eight academic departments. So obviously one of those being our industrial and systems engineering department. And we will go over those specific programs. In terms of our student population, we have over 5,900 graduate students. That includes our master's students, both online and on campus, as well as our PhD students. And as you can see there, you know, our graduate population well outnumbers our undergraduate student population. Um, partially that, you know, is tied to the fact that we are a leader in funded research. So we do have many of our students engaging in research. And um, we have over 35 research centers as well. And in terms of our faculty member, so we have 188 tenure track faculty members, some of which are here today, and um, a total of 30 National Academy of Engineering members at this point, and over 70 National Science Foundation career national and presidential young investigator awardees as well. So some additional points of distinction about our engineering school. We do have an international reputation for excellence. So we have partnerships throughout the world. And, you know, pretty much when you graduate from USC Viterbi, your degree really means something not only here within the U.S., but throughout the world. And so um, it, it is very valuable in that regard. In addition, we have what is called the Trojan Family Network, if you're not familiar with the, the Trojan family. Um, it's something that's very unique and special. Um, a little bit hard to explain because it, it's something that I think until you are a USC student, you don't may not quite understand it. But basically, it's a huge benefit and perk of being a USC student, not only um, as a whole, but specifically from engineering, the fact that we have over 77,000 engineers. We have many um, alumni who are, you know, very willing to, um, you know, to talk with our students and um, be a great resource and guide and, and networking um, op opportunities as well. In terms of our programs that we offer, we have everything from our online Den of Turby graduate programs to, of course, our on-site programs, um, some of which include our short courses and custom programs, which falls under our executive education program offerings. Uh, we also have our bachelor's degrees, of course, master's degrees, doctorate programs, and graduate certificates that all are for credit and separate from our education, executive education offerings. So in terms of the rankings, you know, um, we do have a good number of our prospective students that ask, you know, what are we ranked? Um, so, you know, in terms of the best engineering graduate schools, we are a top 10 ranked graduate engineering program. Specifically within the online arena, we are proud of the fact that we have consistently ranked number one for our online graduate computer information technology program, or computer science. And we're also ranked number two for our online graduate engineering programs, and that spans um, you know, over four programs. So um, again, something we're very proud of and speaks to uh, the flexibility and the caliber of our faculty members um, as well as our unique programs. Um, in addition, if any of you are veterans or active duty military, um, we do like to also mention the fact that we are ranked number one for our online graduate computer science program specifically for veterans as well as ranked number two for our online graduate engineering program for veterans and again spanning all all 40, all over 40 programs. So, you know, as I mentioned, you know, USC Viterbi is a leader in funded research. So we have, you know, many different research centers. Any given time, there is something exciting and unique going on um, that, you know, whether it's within a department or a specific discipline, um, you know, there is so much going on and it is such of an exciting time um, for, you know, the world essentially in terms of engineering um, and computer science specifically. Uh, but, you know, if you have any interest in research, you know, the faculty members can definitely speak more to that if there are any specific questions um, that you might have about, about research. So, but we're going to get to the real reason right here today, um, which is to introduce you to our amazing faculty members within the Industrial Systems Engineering Department. So I do want to first introduce um, Dr. Maja Dasuki. He is the chair of the Daniel J. Epstein Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering. And um, he's also the, dean, the dean's professor of Industrial and Systems Engineering and Spatial Sciences. 
So um, thank you so much for all of you for being here, and I'll go ahead and pass it on to Professor Jasuki. Uh, glad to be here. This is uh, Maggie Jasuki, as um, was previously mentioned. I'm the chair of Industrial System Engineering. We roughly have about 25 full-time faculty member teaching both at the undergraduate, graduate, and uh, both at the master's and PhD, but we're here today to talk about our master's program. I'm, I'm joined by two of my faculty colleagues, Dr. Uh, Giza Botlik. Uh, he's a professor of uh, practice here in our department, and he's the director of our engineering, master, engineering management program. Um, we also have Dr. Cesar Acosta. He's the director of our analytics program, and he's a senior lecturer in our department. Um, those are two of our major programs in our, in our master's level, and I'll go through, if you go through the next slide, uh, <clears throat> you'll see the, the wide variety of, of master's courses that we offer. The television or the computer sign indicates the program is offered uh, through distance education, and then, and then later on Aaron will, will describe what we, what we do in our distance uh, education program here at USC. So if you look at the first three, basically, degrees that we offer at the master's level, those are really our largest programs. And they cover, what I would say, the spectrum of, of our profession. The MS in Industrial System Engineering can be viewed as basically taking our undergraduate co program in Industrial System Engineering and expanding it to the, to the graduate level. It's going to pretty much reflect an undergraduate program in, in Industrial Engineering, but at a more de depth and in a few focus area. Then the other two. Uh, high demand programs, the MS in analytics, focuses on those students who really want to focus on the quantitative area, analytics being mostly in the, in the areas of data analytics. Um, and then you have the master's in engineering management, which focuses more on the management side of uh, industrial engineering. So the way we view our core three master's program in industrial engineering is you have one that focuses more on the quantitative side, then you have one that focuses more on the management side, and then the industrial and systems engineering program is one that really is in the middle and, and covers both spectrums. And then we offer three primarily specialized programs, one in manufacturing engineering, one in operations research, which is also not a quantitative course, and I would say that's more focused on students who want to do more optimization and modeling, whereas the analytics program is much more data intensive and, um, and much more hands-on in terms of computation. And then we have a, a master's program in, in, in product development and engineering, uh, and that's much more focused for students who are interested in, in product design. And then we have a, several uh, dual degrees. Um, now, I'll only mention that our analytics degree, the way we view the analytics in, in, at USC is really an intersection of three main areas. One is optimization, one is um, machine learning, and the third one is uh, statistics. And our analytics program really integrates all three into, into one. Um, now, I have the, my two faculty colleagues that will go more in specific in, in two of our more high demand programs. First, we'll go into more specific into the analytics program, and this will be done by uh, Professor Acosta. Hello, thank you very much, and happy to be here. I am Professor Acosta, program director of the Masters in Analytics. Um, this is our newest program. Uh, however, it is the program that has a highest, uh, largest enrollment and population in our set of master's programs. And this program is designed for those interested in a career in a data-driven organization. If you are uh, interested in analyzing data for, from multiple sources, or if you would like to apply machine learning and business intelligence, uh, to build analytic solutions, well, this is probably one very good option for you. So the master's in analytics is a uh, master's that is under, un, it's undergoing a, a change in the program. So this is the current program, and uh, I will describe briefly the new program that is coming in the 2020-2021 academic year. So in the current program, we have a set of required courses and a set of electives. The set of required courses are composed of five uh, required courses, to, uh, one of them from informatics and four of them from ISC. The predictive analytics is the second required course. It actually should be ISC 529. And from a set of two courses defined as group A, the students need to take one of them. 
So these two are decision type of courses, decision analysis type of courses. Uh, one uh, is focusing on simulation and the other is focusing on uh, Markov models. Uh, the set of required courses uh, is focusing on the basic core uh, topics that we need in data analytics. So we focus on learning how to collect, how to describe, and how to visualize data. And then in predictive analytics, the, the focus is how to build models for prediction, classification, and clustering. And uh, the other courses like optimization, integrative analytics, and decision analysis are focusing on understanding the fundamentals behind machine learning models. And uh, one of the nice things about this program that I like the most is the flexibility that students have to select electives from other units. So they can tailor their own career path through selecting courses from other schools, or from other departments. For example, many students choose to take classes from computer science. Uh, others like to take more business-oriented classes from our Marshall School of Business. And some other ones choose to select uh, courses from our own ISC different programs. So uh, we are... Uh, developing new courses that are coming up in, in, in 2020. I can tell you that in the spring 2020, we are offering new courses in data mining, in business intelligence, in text analytics. And these courses that are uh, electives uh, uh, at the beginning of 2020 will become uh, required courses in the new program uh, in 2021. So, be aware that uh, the program is growing and the program is also changing. Uh, we currently have around 125 enrolled students uh, that are working in mainly consulting firms, uh, tech corporations, and uh, startups. So if you uh, have more questions about our master programs, I will be happy to answer your questions once we finish describing the other programs. I will invite Professor Geza Botley to, to explain you the other programs. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Professor Botlick, and uh, I'm glad to have a chance to, to speak to you. And uh, mainly I want to uh, talk a little bit about um, why one would take engineering management and what those people actually do. And uh, the, the basic premise is that the vast, uh, a very large proportion of an engineers become managers and are really unprepared for the management uh, portions of their, of their jobs, whereas it is still very necessary that they have a sense of their engineering expertise, which comes from their undergraduate, undergraduate degree. So, um, so we, our program actually blends together both working engineers and recent graduates and a few people who actually have been managers for a number of years and just want to expand, expand or refresh their knowledge of some of these particular fields. And uh, uh, our recent graduates, of course, are not going to get jobs directly as managers, but they become much more employable, and of course, they get terrific chance to subsequently become, become managers. Can I have the next slide? Okay, so this kind of reiterates a little bit of what was on the last, uh, last slide, and uh, so uh, again, to, to, to get to the specific parts in here, the uh, program has about 100 to 125 students at any given time, and we graduate about 50 uh, students per year with uh, the bulk of them graduating in June and some in December. Um, and the program does run through through the summers, and I'll point out later the number of courses that are actually available in the summertime as well. So most people have a fairly good chance of finishing up in three semesters plus the, plus the summer. Uh, about 15% of our students are off campus, and Erin uh, is going to talk later about how those, that's actually delivered, but the idea is that those students are getting exactly the same lectures, same homeworks, same tests as the on-campus students are, except they don't have to be here. 
We have both full-time professors and industry experts who teach, uh, and the industry people have substantial teaching experience. Many of them have been teaching for us for 15 or 20, 20 years. And uh, our graduates uh, are really just all over the place. Some, some international students go back home. Um, many of them stay here. Uh, as uh, Cesar mentioned earlier, uh, a heavy proportion go into consulting. Uh, and uh, but uh, the uh, Los Angeles area is so full of employment pos possibilities that um, some students actually go with very small companies or with um, or, or with startups. But in generally, uh, in either management training or actually going into manager managerial positions or non-managerial positions with substantial uh, responsibilities in terms of. Uh, performance. Next slide, please. I actually have a question from the audience. Um, so the question is, what's the difference between the MS in engineering management versus obtaining an MBA? Oh, I, I never thought somebody would ask. <laughs> it, it's uh, actually one of our favorite topics because I, I think that the distinction is very important. And uh, the, uh, the main distinction, I would say, is that we're depending on the engineering expertise of these students to actually manage engineers. I mean, that's, uh, or manage projects that are engineering uh, content, content heavy. MBAs are really aimed at the financial side of the world, the marketing and, uh, and those kind of business kind of things that are not dependent on an engineering education. And uh, um, at least in my opinion, we don't really want MBAs managing engineering projects. Uh, we, we want somebody who actually understands um, the technology without having to be particularly, you know, completely up to date because once you become managing your, your, um, your technical uh, detailed knowledge atrophies, but your general understanding of technology actually increases. Okay, I think I was on jobs, but I really was, was done with that. So let me go to the program itself. Uh, uh, it's uh, basically four sets of things. Uh, one is some uh, basic set of required classes, uh, which uh, uh, make sure that you have an understanding of decision making and statistics and the value of data, and, uh, and of course, we also have access to uh, analytic classes, as Cesar says, because that's a very coming, coming thing. You need to be able to manage a project. You need to understand people and how to manage them and how to lead, uh, uh, lead people in teams. And of course, you, you do need the things, some of the things that you learn from MBAs, which is to do economic analysis, but we really concentrate on analyzing engineering projects and their potential to actually be uh, successful. Um, we have a business area that is uh, quite open. Uh, we have access to our excellent uh, uh, um, business school where we, we can take uh, classes from there. Um, we do have a technical elective, and basically that revolves around optimization or decision, decision analysis. And uh, finally, we do have four electives, which gives you a lot of room, but I do generally uh, counsel each student to um, select a set of courses that make sense, sense to them. Sometimes that's all business classes. Sometimes that's uh, enhancing their undergraduate degree. And of course, many people take uh, internships, of which there are many, many available within the Los Angeles area and actually across the countries. A number of my students during the summer are you know, in Boston or uh, Houston or Seattle or some other place where they have gotten a fairly good uh, internship. Perfect. And actually, before we move on, I did get a, another question from the audience. And this is actually for Dr. Acosta and the question. So I'll go back to the, his slide for the MS in analytics program. So the question is, I was looking at this program and other USC programs such as business analytics under Marshall and applied data science under Viterbi. How does the MS in analytics differ from these two programs? Okay, thank you for asking this question. This question is very recurrent, and I have been asked this question many times before. That is correct. Uh, there are several across USC that are related to data science. From the Marshall School of Business, they have a business and analytics uh, program, master's program, 
uh, our program is a program in Masters in Analytics, and Computer Science Department has a program in Computer Science and Data Science. So the question is what they have in common and what they are, in, in which sense they are different. So very briefly, the business analytics from Marshall, it focuses on the business domain. So the business analytics professional should have a clear understanding of the business domain where they are analyzing some data sets and they are trying to solve some uh, questions, some problems, and de developing some projects. For example, if the business domain is finance, the business analyst should have a very good background in finance and how to gather data, how to collect financial data, and how to analyze it. <clears throat> the data analyst uh, should have a more uh, thorough understanding of the methods, how to clean the data, how to reorganize the data, how to analyze the data in very different ways. So it's more a technical background rather than business uh, approach. They are going to have courses related to different business domains, but not as extended as those that come from a business analyst uh, background. On the other hand, the computer scientist, data science professional has more technical background than a data analyst. For example, sometimes we want to construct a machine learning um, algorithm on the cloud, or maybe to analyze big data. Big data, uh, data that has to be analyzed uh, across a distributed platform that cannot be analyzed on a single server or a single machine. So for that cases, we need a professional that has more background in computer science and the computer science data science uh, program will be more suitable. Hopefully this clarifies the question. Very briefly, uh, we do have an excellent opportunity for those of you who are interested in actually getting a master's in your uh, basic uh, specialty, aerospace, mechanical, electrical, or petroleum, and at the same time get a master's in engineering management, and we reduce the degree requirements, the total for, to 48 instead of the 30 plus 30. So it's a substantial savings both in time and money, and you do get separate, complete degrees as a consequence. So I'll quickly go over, this is again, uh, Professor Dasuki. Um, I spoke earlier. We'll quickly go over the other master's program. As I mentioned, the one that's in the middle of the analytics and engineering management is our master's in industrial system engineering program. And I would say of the specialization uh, in uh, industrial engineering that it, the program is most geared for is for those who, who are really mostly going to be entering the supply chain logistics profession. If you look at the required courses, those tend to be the primary focus area of the required courses. And then you have uh, some, I would say, group uh, selection from groups, and each one of those selections focus on a particular methodology that you'll be using in that domain. For example, you'll have a group selection optimization, one primarily in quality management, and then another one in in, in, in stochastics and simulation modeling, and that's the master's in industrial engineering. Our next program that we offer that's a very specialized program is probably the program that's the most uh, flexible. It has 18 units of electives and 12 free units are required, and it's really focused for those who are interested in the manufacturing engineering profession. And the students here graduate and actually work mostly in, in a factory setting. Uh, the next degree is the Master's in Operations Research Engineering, and it's a highly quantitative degree, and it's, it's, it really prepares students who really want to continue on for a doctoral program in, in, in our program. Uh, but it also, I would say it contrasts with our analytics degree because this is much more of a modeling program, whereas our analytics degree is a much more of a data analysis and data tool set uh, degree. And here you'll take courses in optimization, simulation, and, and, and stochastics modeling would be the primary emphasis. And uh, the last degree that I'm going to uh, mention is the Master's in Product Development. This is a joint degree really with the uh, aerospace and mechanical engineering program, and there's really two different tracks in this. One is more of the technology track, those with, with more of a mechanical engineering background, and then there's one that's more of the systems track, which is uh, more geared for those who have an industrial engineering background. In the systems track, 
really the focus there is on how do we organize a system to do effective product development. And here, a lot of these students will graduate and move into kind of a design job. I should also mention that we have a joint degree with the ISE and the MBA, and, and, and students take this degree because the MBA in itself is typically around 60 units, and our master's and IE is typically around 30 units. So combined, that's 90 units. By doing the joint program, you're reducing it to a 66-unit program, where 18 of those units have to be in, in engineering and 40, 48 are in, in, <coughs> in the business school. So you'll be getting basically an MBA with 48 units, and then with um, – so basically with six extra units than a typical MBA, you would get an MBA plus a – engineering degree, and that's why that's a, an attractive degree for some students. And then, and we basically have a certificate in health systems uh, operations. In fact, we're initiating that will soon be in the books as a new master's degree, which will basically take the certificate and expand it significantly into a master's degree. And then here, the students um, are interested in a career in healthcare operations. Uh, a number of our students enter that profession with with our other master's degree, but this degree really focuses the, the training in, in, in that sector. And with that, I, I pass this back to um, Aaron. Thank you so much. Um, so I do have a question that a lot of our students asked, and you know, it would, it would be, you know, what do uh, USC Viterbi students do? Um, what do our graduates do? So. Yeah, well, I kind of got – this is Professor Botlick back again. Um, I kind of got started on this a little bit. So uh, let, let me actually really start, first talk about what our students actually do. And um, one of my real pleasures here is that we have a very active a student leadership and a student organization. It's actually called Engineering Management Student Association, but actually has the membership of all the ISC uh, – graduate students, and they hold multiple events. Uh, for example, we have a mixer coming up this Friday evening uh, for students and, and faculty, but we also have um, uh, uh, tutorials, uh, like I did a tutorial in, in, in supply chain management last year, and also another one in using Excel VBA. Um, so, and we also have uh, arrange for companies, uh, local companies, who come in and speak to our students, and uh, and those generally result in in internships and frequently also in full time full time hiring. So that's uh, and of course we are in the Los Angeles area, so uh, there's lots of lots of museums and beaches and and mountains to to do with your spare time. Um, and uh, as to what our graduates actually do. And that's more difficult to answer because the answer is really just about anything. Uh, the concentration is on supply chain, as uh, Dr. Uh, Dasuki mentioned. It's also on uh, consulting, and uh, the rest of it are really spread all over. All over. A lot of it, uh, to be more specific about supply chain, uh, tends to be in uh, organizations that specialize in lots of moving lots of product. So we're talking about uh, uh, Walmart and Target and, and and Home Depot and those kinds of companies. And uh, we also uh, place a fair number of people in uh, uh, at Microsoft, and but mostly in the supply chain area as opposed to in in computers. Okay, again, Professor Acosta from the Master's in Analytics. Uh, I uh, already mentioned that mo most of our students from analytics graduate and they start working in consulting firms, tech companies, and startups. The positions that they are working in may be uh, business intelligence analyst, system analyst, or just data analyst. And they are working with different uh, tools related to data analytics and software programs, skills, like they learn Python, R, SQL. They learn uh, different frames to work with data. They learn data warehousing, database, the different databases. So they can apply these uh, skills through a wide variety of problems and industries. So it's very common that they work on consulting firms like 
uh, Ernst and Young, they work on um, Price Waterhouse, or similar in different big cities across the U.S. So I return this to Erin. Thank you all so much for your fabulous insight. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and now talk about our, on, our actually our course delivery method options. So we have two options. We have, of course, our on-campus full-time option um, where typically our, our students are taking three to four courses per semester and generally completing their degree in about one and a half to two years. So, you know, typically these students are going full speed with their program and um, are on campus and um, engaging uh, with the faculty members. And in addition, of course, we also have our online Denevaturbi delivery method. Um, so I will go into more detail about this delivery method, uh, but we have, you know, as um, our faculty members mentioned, we do have, you know, several online students who do um, pursue their program completely online, many of which are working professionals that need the flexibility to pursue their degree from pretty much any location. Uh, so they tend to take one to two classes per semester just because they're working full time, but it is flexible based off of you know your needs and so you don't actually have to be a working professional to pursue your program online so maybe you are in the military um, or at a, on a base or maybe you are just in a location somewhere across the world um, you can pursue your program online and I'll talk about that um, in addition you know typically because most students are taking one to two courses per semester they generally take about two and a half to three years to complete their degree but as long as students complete their degree within five years with the ability to petition for an additional two years um, it is flexible so how our online denovatory delivery method works, so we have our own in-house proprietary web-based delivery system. Um, and we have an entire a team of our Denevaturbi staff um, network support who is absolutely fantastic in supporting our students, whether it's technical assistance. We also have a Denevaturbi exam coordinator um, as well as homework exams um, office. And the way that our online delivery works is, is very flexible. So you actually have three options as an online student. The first is that you can watch the lectures live as they're happening on campus. So so that enables you to log in, you can um, chat your questions or use the Q&A panel similar to this session. Um, but then if you're not able to uh, you know, attend the live lectures, you can also watch the lectures via the course archives. So every single live lecture on campus is recorded. And so um, you know everything that is heard and, and discussed during that lecture would be recorded. You would have access to the course archives where a, um, a recording of that lecture um, is available from that point until the end of the very end of the semester. So a lot of our students use it also as a, st a t studying tool to go back and review the content. And in addition, you are welcome to come to campus. So you do have a seat in the classroom if you ever want to come to campus and meet the faculty members as well as your peers, you are more than welcome to do that. And um, and it, it's flexible though. So if you cannot come to campus or do USC's campus at all at any point in your program, that's completely fine. It is absolutely optional. And I'll talk about some of the lecture and how the homework works and things like that in the next slide. But I do want to point out in terms of exams, just because that can be um, a little bit of something that can be concerned for students, is that you know our students, if you are in the Los Angeles, Ventura, Orange County areas, you would take your exams on USC's campus. Um, so you would actually have to come to campus, but that would avoid you having to pay for any proctoring exam fees. In addition, we do have a dedicated Denovatorp exam coordinator that can help assist you in finding a location to take your exams, whether that be a community college, a local library. We also have what's called corporate proctoring, where if you have an HR supervisor or a supervisor that is willing to proctor examinations, they can actually do that from your, your job site as well. So this gives you a good idea, a side-by-side -side comparison of an online Denevaturbi 
option versus on, on campus. So the program admission is exactly the same. So the graduate application, the required materials are absolutely no different. When you apply for a program, you're applying for that particular degree program. You're not applying to be an online student versus an on-campus student because there is flexibility between the two. We have had students transition from online to on-campus and vice versa. Um, for weekly course lectures, we do have three options. So we have, as I mentioned, our live online with interactivity, um, being able to call in during the sessions or chat your questions uh, via the course archives, recordings, as well as on campus. For our on campus students, they are expected to come to USC's campus and attend all the lectures. They do have access to the course recordings, but that is based off purely of whether or not there's a Jennifer Turby online student in the class. So our online students do drive the flexibility there. Um, in terms of assignments, you would submit your uh, same exact assignments, same deadlines. Um, again, it, you know, it is the same exact course, so you would be held to the, those same deadlines. Um, the exams, as I mentioned, you know, Proctor location or USC's campus, depending where you're located. Uh, courses per semester talked about. Uh, degree completion requirements, 27 to 37 units with a 3.0 GPA or above. And there is absolutely no distinction on your diploma as to whether or not you're pursuing your program online versus on campus. You're earning the same exact degree, uh, whichever delivery method you choose. So this gives you a behind the scenes look. So as I mentioned, every single class is recorded. And during the live lectures, there is a Den of Viterbi staff member that uh, oftentimes one of our uh, cinema camera operators uh, that makes sure that everything that's going on in the, in the room in terms of the content that is being, uh, that's being, um, shown is very up close and you can see all everything that's going on in that regard but also being able to hear um, what is being said in the classroom there are mics embedded in the classroom as well and if if you ever have uh, questions and call in then the students within the class would be able to hear you as well so it's a two-way street there and this shows you what it would look like during the, you know, to, or actually to be able to download and, lect and, and watch the lectures on your own time. So um, this is a great, again, studying tool, or if you're watching the lectures for the first time, um, whenever it's convenient for you, um, it's, you know, there's easy ac content access at the top. You can um, jump to certain parts of the lecture so you don't have to necessarily watch the entire lecture over again. You can actually even fast forward and slow it down. Um, so it's very user friendly. Our students often say, you know, they're able to even watch it from whether it's their tablet or, or their phone in transit. Um, so it's very flexible and convenient. In addition, we also, this actually just shows during the live lecture an example of um, this faculty member is using the smart, a smart board. So as you can see, it's very um, up close and it looks even better than this. This is just a snapshot, but um, you know, it's very clear and what you can see too is also the faculty member gesturing to certain parts or emphasizing certain content. So you, you have a good idea and two different viewpoints at any given point point um, as to what's going on. Uh, so, and depending on the individual course, you know, you may or are likely to have interactive um, group meetings or group discussions, uh, presentations, et cetera. I know um, within engineering management, there are a good amount of courses where you do have a lot of interactivity. And um, for those purposes, we have a variety of different communication tools, um, whether it's during the class session or outside. Uh, so everything from, you know, BlueJeans, uh, Google Hangout, Adobe Connect, Web, WebEx. Uh, there's so many different communication tools that our students use, whether they're online or even our on-campus students really just prefer to interact, you know, from wherever they're located. It's just it's a lot more convenient. And in addition, you know, as we mentioned, you can call in during live lectures. There's also live chats and threaded discussion boards. Um, you can also set up meetings with faculty, TAs, and peers. And actually, you know, I just want to take the time to ask the faculty member, you know, how does it work with your with your online students? Well, what, uh, what I tend to do is uh, really uh, invite students to participate in WebEx. That's why, but you know, that's not always possible because you know, either time zone or, or working requires, requires. For example, I almost always have a Korean Air student who, who obviously is very far away, although given that they 
get free flights. They usually show up twice a semester, even being halfway around the world. Um, but you do have, uh, most of my students tend to use um, uh, either WebEx, and for example, this semester, I usually have about 50 or 60 percent participation with WebEx. And I might want to mention that there is video, obviously, from, the, from one direction, but there's no video in the other direction, so we cannot see the, uh, the students, but we can hear them. And of course, they can hear us. And uh, uh, you can use chat, but uh, it's kind of hard because you're, you're you're concentrating on lecturing and, and speaking to the students, so it's hard to pay attention to the chat. And um, the other thing is the discussion board on, the, on our uh, desire to learn uh, uh, co course management system. And that has, uh, has a lot of traffic where we usually get 20, 30 uh, postings per week where uh, students generally are trying to help each other with homework. And, uh, and you know, what I'm usually not aware of is just what exactly they are doing on their own in order to communicate. But uh, I give at least a half a dozen team, team assignments, and uh, they, they manage very well. So I'm sure they find some of the things that uh, Erin mentioned to help them do that. Great. Thank you. So just to wrap up, Deneva Turby, so, you know, is there any difference between earning a master's degree on campus versus online via Deneva Turby? Answer is no. Um, again, the same admission criteria, curriculum, homework, exams, homework assignments. Therefore, you are really earning the same exact degree, whether you pursue your degree on campus or online. Some additional information for those that might be interested. So we do have, I'm going to talk about um, formal admission, but um, first I do want to talk about limited status. Um, so limited status does allow strong candidates with an undergrad degree in engineering, math, or science with at least a 3.0 GPR or above to get a jump start in taking courses before formally applying for admission. So, you know, as a limited status student, you could actually get started as early as the spring 2020 semester, which is just around the corner. It starts in January. And um, there's a maximum of 12 units you can take. So, but it is important to note that limited status enrollment is a great option to get a jump start in taking courses, but you do still have to apply for formal admission and um, limited status does not guarantee that you be formally admitted. So if you are interested in getting started as a limited status um, student, you would need to complete what's called the Denim Viterbi profile. It takes about 15, 20 minutes to complete, and um, you can find out whether or not you are approved to take courses starting in the spring. This Professor Balag, I might mention that many, many years ago, I was a limited student <laughs> here, and I got my degrees from USC as well. And the limited status really helped because I made up my mind to, to, in the middle of August that I wanted to get started on my graduate work, and uh, I got to start that, that September, and of course got admitted by the time we came to January. Great. Perfect. Um, have what's called an employer reimbursement deferment program. So this is great for those who, particularly for our online Denver Turby students that work for a company um, that pays the uh, that pays their tuition essentially. But rather than having to pay out of pocket up front, uh, you can actually defer your payment of your tuition till of ni up to 90% of your tuition until after the semester is over. So to be eligible, you do have to have your employer reimburse you for the tuition at e the end of each term, and your student account must be current. There are some additional things that you would be required to submit each semester, which you can see there. Um, so if you are interested in this program, we do encourage you to go to the link there. And again, I will send a PDF copy of today's presentation within a few business days. Um, but moving on to the formal admission. So, you know, this is is the general criteria, um, keeping in mind that as you all saw, there are quite a few programs that are offered uh, within the industrial systems engineering department. Um, so in general, and I realize there's a typo here, so an undergrad degree in engineering, does not need to be petroleum, engineering, math, or hard science, uh, hard science being biology, chemistry, physics, etc. Um, and 
and it must come from a regionally accredited college or university. In addition, you must have a cumulative undergraduate GPA of at least a 3.0 or a 4.0 scale, um, though it is not required. So it, while it's recommended, uh, we recognize that not everyone quite has that 3.0 or above GPA. In that regard, um, we do encourage you to strengthen your application in other ways that you can, whether it's through the GRE, your personal statement, um, you know, finding really strong letters of recommendation, et cetera. Um, the GRE is required, so we do get that question a lot. Um, the GRE general test is is required. Um, if you've taken the exam less than five years uh, less than five years ago, that is still um, applicable as well. Um, but you know there is no minimum GRE score required. It's just one of several components of um, the the holistic application process. Um, also, you would need to submit a CV or resume um, that is required. You would need to upload that through the USC Graduate Online Application, as well as a personal statement. Um, no specific format for that, but typically it's about a page or so. Um, letters of recommendation, you know, this is the area where it's going to vary the most by program, so you will want to make sure that you go to the individual program page to make sure, um, you know, how many letters of recommendation are required, if at all. Um, and then the TOEFL, it is required for international students. I did see a question as to whether or not, you know, what is um, eligible um, for in order to waive the, the TOEFL. And so in order to waive the TOEFL of your international student, you must hold a bachelor's degree um, completely in its completed in its entirety in the U.S. or another Anglophone country, so an English-speaking country, um, or your native language must be English. Um, so, you know, it's for those who are native English speakers from countries um, where English is the, is the official language of instruction. So for application deadlines, our next application is for the fall 2020 semester, which will start in August of next year. Um, the deadline to submit all required materials is going to be January 15th. Um, for those of you that are, are um, interested in pursuing your program on campus and want to be considered for scholarships, um, you would actually have the deadline coming up on December 15th, and that is the deadline for scholarships. For those of you that are interested in pursuing your program online via Dana Viterbi, we do have some flexibility for um, Den of Attribute applicants. Um, and so we do encourage you, if you get close to that deadline and need additional time, um, we can oftentimes uh, provide an extension on a case-by-case -case basis. So you can reach out to us at denofaturbi.usc.edu. Um, and then the next semester after that would be for spring 2020, which would start in January of 2020. And the application deadline, again, would be September 15th. And then the scholarship consideration for on-campus students only would be August 31st. So this gives you an idea of the current tuition um, and fee structure for, so the tuition is the same for on campus and online students. It's no different because you're in the same exact courses. Um, but you, if you want more information about the per semester fees that would, you would also be responsible for, we do encourage you to go to our tuition and fees page for more details. So to get started, if you are interested in pursuing your program on campus, we do encourage you to visit USC's campus and meet with one of our representatives, as well as start your application. If you're interested in pursuing your program online, you are also welcome to come to campus or, you know, happy to speak with you over the phone um, or, of course, via email. Um, but, you know, you would also be able to start your application um, as early as the fall for the fall 2020 term. In addition, if you're interested in starting as a limited status student, again, you can get a jump start on taking courses as early as spring 2020, which starts in January. So you would complete your Jennifer Turby profile. So now I'm going to open it up to additional questions. So if any of you have any remaining questions for our faculty member, please do um, chat them now or use the Q&A panel, please, to use them now. Um, I do have a question already. Um, the question is um, uh, about the, I, the ISEA PhD program, which we won't be talking specifically, going to specifics about the PhD program, but we do, you know, get questions as to, you know, um, you know whether somebody should go for a master's degree versus a PhD program. So I don't know if anyone wants to. So the general question is whether someone wants to go get a master's or a PhD, they're very different degrees. 
the master's degree is a professional degree that prepares you for the workplace in, you know, in development or, or, or management or engineering or, or such. The PhD degree specifically uh, trains you for a research degree, for a research job, whether that research job is in industry or in academics. So it's a research degree. The courses are much more uh, advanced, more based on th theory, whereas the master's courses are much more based on actually developing a tool set that you can use on the job from day one, whereas the PhD degree is more to train you to be able to create the next set of tools, and that's really the fundamental difference between the two programs. Now, there are students who, who do apply without a master's degree directly to our PhD group, degree. So you can apply to our PhD program directly with a, with a bachelor's degree, and most will pick up a master's on, along their way, just so that way they have a, uh, the degree that <coughs> prepares them for the professional workplace. And uh, the advantage of that, of course, is that our PhD program is most of our, well, all of our PhD students are funded by the university in some way or another or by their home institution if they're working for, for a company or from their home country for, through a fellowship whereas most of our master's students, um, uh, they pay the tuition uh, directly by full. And this next question is for Dr. Costa. Is are there any are there different undergraduate degrees weighted differently in terms of being admitted for the analytics or any other master's program? Well, in, in our department, we don't have an undergraduate degree in data analytics. Uh, so the question is more along the lines of if, if there's a certain undergrad degree that would be more beneficial to have um, to get into the analytics program. Yeah, the analytics is uh, at the intersection of statistics, computer science, and business domain. So any background in those areas, it's going to be helpful if you proceed to the master's in analytics. Our admission requirements are basically to have a course in uh, CALC, a course in linear algebra, and a course in computer programming. So those programs, undergraduate programs that have those uh, individual courses are going to be helpful. So if you are looking for a, a, if you have a background, undergraduate background in computer science or statistics or any engineering uh, undergraduate degree, is definitely going to be helpful for on this master's program. Great, thank you so much. Um, let's see if any additional questions. And again, you know, it's very important to just keep in mind that there's um, different requirements for the individual degrees. Um, and the next question is I um, for everyone. Uh, so because the de pro product development engineering master's program um, is a joint program between AME and ISE, can students choose courses from both departments? Well, yeah, some, some of the uh, required courses are actually, some are going to be in, in AME and some are going to be in the ME. So if you look at the program requirements, it's depending on which track that you take, whether if you take the technology track or whether you take the systems track, uh, it will primarily tell you where most of your courses are going to be. There's going to be some courses that are going to be in, in both degrees, I mean both tracks, and there's going to be some courses that are going to be more heavily focused for the systems track, which is the IE section, and there's going to be some courses much more focused on the technology track for ME. So there's definitely going to be a lot of flexibility in terms of what track you want to select, and then that's going to help guide in terms of um, the mix of courses you want to take. And then, of course, there's some free electives that you can take, and from those free electives you could take either from the IAC or the AME track departments. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. So it looks like the remaining questions I will be able to answer individually. So I want to, you know, thank you all for your great questions. I do, of course, want to thank our amazing faculty members. I found, personally found that very insightful, so hopefully all of you out there did. Uh, but for those of you that are listening right now, um, please reach out to us. If you have any other questions via email or phone or those that are watching the recording, uh, do reach out to us if for on-campus students, viterbi.gradadmission at usc.edu or our online Den of Viterbi, um, prospective students, den So thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. And as we see here at USC, fight on.